Christine is going to begin the class. Thank okay. You so much. Um, all right. First of all, I'll go ahead and spotlight myself. And what you will see, uh, let's go to this picture because that link isn't, hmm, put the link in the wrong place. It's going to have to live there. I don't remember I moved that, but anyhow, ignore that link just for the time being. And I'm going to put my hair in a ponytail too because it's falling forward and bothering me. All right, today we're going to do some abstract fruit in a bowl. Now this, you know, for me, painting abstract, let me just go back to, I'm not an abstract artist, so teaching an abstract class is kind of scary to me. Now I had great fun with last week in the landscapes, but that was kind of easy. When I got to doing this fruit bowl thing, I thought, how am I going to paint an abstract fruit in a bowl? I know people do that. Uh, I, I've seen paintings of it. How am I going to get there? Because I'm going to keep wanting to paint real fruit in a real bowl. So I did a quick little study of, uh, of abstract. And, uh, and I say quick. Um, it wasn't quick. But I spent a lot of time searching around things on the Internet, watching other YouTube videos about it, what other artists have to say about it, and came up with, um, with a couple of things. First of all, you should know abstract is an extremely broad term. There's a whole lot of stuff that falls under the heading of abstract. Basically, um, you have realism on this side, abstract on, well, non-representational on this side, and abstract is like a slide in between the two. You can have degrees of abstract going all the way from realism towards non-representational. And non-representational means you're not painting something that's meant to have meaning outside of maybe uh, conveying emotional something like a joy or anger or something. So abstract has a, has a lot of stuff under it. And that link that I told you to ignore, let's see if I can get back to that. There we go. Okay, that link that's right across the bottom of the screen there, somewhere like right and there, okay, right in there. Um, that is a link to an article that I found, which I'm going to show you some information from uh, one page of this article, but it is a great article if you're really interested in uh, studying abstract art. Write down that, uh, that link right there, and uh, it, it'll be up. I'm going to switch over to here again, and it's tiny, but I think you can probably still see it uh, good enough. And if I, if, if if Jackie or Julie, if either one of you could copy that over into the chat, that might be a good thing to have happen uh, in case anybody wants it. And if you can't see it, just holler. I'll put it back to the other screen that has it um, written larger. And. Uh, what I wanted to show you was right here, this one, one of the types of abstract that is covered in this article, it talks about line art, and that got me to thinking of a way to get to abstract, because we want to do a bowl of fruit. You see our reference photo there? Uh, there, right down below me. Uh, it's a bowl of fruit, mostly bananas and yellow fruit things, and it's a little boring, so I'm going to change that up a bit. But um, in reading about this um, line art, which uh, combines abstract line drawings and kind of surrealism type of stuff, this was uh, done a lot by an artist um, who I think the name is Joan Miro, but it's a man, so it's spelled J-O-A-N. I'm going to just say Joan because that's what it looks like. Miro, M-I-R-O. That artist uh, did a lot of stuff in this style, and um, it's a great way to get over into abstract. So I, I got a lot of good information out of this article. It's called 10 Types of Abstract Art to Know and Use in Your Designs. I think the person that did this article 
uh, was doing interior design or something. But there's, I'll just flip through it really fast. What is abstract art and what are they useful for? And then there's these styles, paint, uh, splatter, and dripping, which a lot of us are kind of familiar with. We think of this when we think of abstract. Um, then there's block, color, and there was several artists. I'm not going to try to tell you all of that because we don't have time today to make a big study of abstract. This is um, marbling, uh, cubism. Cubism is big to, to be familiar with uh, and, and will help you to do your art uh, line. Um, Memphis style, I never even heard of that before, <laughs> but, but it's cool. And um, abstract organic stuff. And uh, then, then it gets into a little bit more weird stuff and surrealism and uh, stuff I don't really understand. But again, I'm not really an abstract artist. But, uh, but we can do abstract and do it great. So if you have time, uh, look up that article, uh, read it. You'll learn a lot. Now, we're going to get from that bowl of fruit, we're going to start out and do something that looks like this. This is, let me zoom in for you. This is a bowl of fruit that, this is considered abstract. It's just not, it's not as far across the line over into um, non-representational. It's closer to realism or representational, but it's also not, you know, this is my interpretation of that bowl of fruit. And if I put the reference back up there, you see the difference. This is not, a realistic representation of that bowl of fruit right there. But it is a bowl of fruit. And so this is good enough to be considered abstract. The next thing we're going to do is looks more like this. This is kind of, I took the line art thing, and we're going to jump right into this in a second here. Um, but I wanted to flip through them really fast so you know where we're going. This uh, is like line art. Um, Excuse me for one second. I just glanced up and there's a thing on my screen that says someone is in the waiting room. I don't know if that's accurate or not, but anyway. Um, I got a bit. Okay, thank you. Um, this is, we're going to take line art. We're going to do a thing called blind contour. Don't get scared. It's fun and easy and there's a purpose to it. I'll explain that in a minute. We're going to go from that over into something which I think is much more like what uh, maybe that artist Miro may have done because I looked online at a lot of his artwork and it was similar to this. This to me is more of an abstract, but it's still my bowl of fruit. I don't know if you can see that progression there from that to that. It's still my bowl of fruit. And then we're going to take it all the way as far as I can go with it. And remember, I'm not really an abstract artist, but I can, uh, I can take that and take what I learned about abstract and go to this point. This is my bowl of fruit, or fruit in a bowl, uh, in an abstract picture. So uh, putting those all back in their little neat little piles here, we're going to start out with just drawing really fast. Um, and I got to get the one of these. That I got to make sure I've got the right paper. When we get to the splatter at the end, I have to have one of these that's going to hold a lot of water. So that's We'll make that one be the last one. You need, again, just like last week, um, about four pieces of paper would be great. They don't have to be large. You can take your, your uh, regular sheet of watercolor paper and tear it in half and have two. Mine are six by nine. Yours can be any size you want them to be. Um, okay, let's see. This one is going to go on, on here. This one will go on here, this one will go on here, that one goes on there. Okay, got that organized. Now, I just want you to take a pencil and just look at that reference picture and draw it out as you see it, except for I will tell you, I thought all yellow fruit was boring, so I changed it to an apple and an orange, and I've got a, a peach back in there, and I threw some grapes in, and there's grapes on the ground, or, I mean on the table, and you, you just like that. So. Just throw something in there, or actually, you know what? Let's see what time it is. For time's sake, let's just pretend we did this one, okay? We, we, we've drawn a bowl of fruit that looks as close as we can get it to, uh, there, to that bowl of fruit right there. Just a bowl of fruit, just simply drawn 
Uh, but don't pay, a, you know, we just pretend we didn't pay a whole lot of attention to the uh, the detail. And in fact, you, a bunch of your heads are down. I'm thinking maybe you want to go ahead and do this. So let's do it. Let's just, um, you just draw looking at the, at the picture. Um, and you look at the picture. And for this one, you can look right back down at your um, paper that you're drawing on as well. And uh, Just get that drawn on there kind of quickly. Because we're not really looking for per correct perspective or anything. We're just drawing something that's sort of representative of what we see in this bowl. I've got an apple and a lemon and, oops, I should have put my bananas in first. So there's a couple of bananas in that bowl. I'm going to put an orange right there. Erase that line that's in the way. Uh, then let's see, I've got that peach back there. And it's got a stem sticking up out of it and a couple of leaves. Then I want to throw in some grapes piled on the top there. And I've got one hanging down just for fun and a little heap of them on the ground over here on the table. Sorry, I keep saying ground. Now my bowl has a little blue stripe on it, so I'm going to put that. And uh, in the picture, it's red. Well, I like blue better, so I use that. All right, so that's all I needed to do for that. And then I would paint this just like normal painting. Just color the apple red, color the lemon yellow, color the peach and, and you know make this painted just like a regular picture there is a degree of abstract to that i have several others that i did also this one is just um just a bowl of fruit and uh let me zoom in here so you can see i didn't take a lot of time to make them exactly realistic because that was not the intention here However, you can look at that and you can see that is very definitely a bowl of fruit and it is pretty. This one right here is a bowl of cherries. Uh, I hope that you can see in this one. I really didn't try for realism in here at all. I didn't try to shade the bowl, the cherries in the bowl and give them shape and form. I just painted them different colors of red and pink because it would be pretty and it looks like a bowl of cherries or a bowl of red berries of some sort um, without having much concern about making them look realistic. Uh, that counts for abstract. Now for time's sake, I'm not going to paint this one. We're, we all know how to just paint that in. We're going to skip to the next piece, which is um, our, our uh, first version of a line drawing. Now this um, is blind contour. There, the things about blind contour, it can teach you, um, and by the way, don't start drawing this one yet, but get your paper ready to go. Um, it can teach you to see things differently. It can teach you to see beauty in your line. Let me keep it scooted over here and let's see if that light helps at all. Uh, it can teach you to see uh, beauty in your line, even though your line is imperfect. Um, it can also help you see that a confident line is prettier than one where you've tentatively worked to try to get it exactly perfect and maybe you've drawn it and erased it and drawn it and erased it trying to get it just exactly right and there's some tension there that you probably don't want in your piece because it's not going to be as pretty as a very confident line where you just confidently confidently drew that lemon shape and maybe you didn't get it exactly perfect but you know what if you've ever looked at lemons in the in the grocery store when they got a whole heap of them in one pile they don't all look the same so uh just don't worry about it what we're going to do here is an exercise called blind contour drawing and this is something that if you will take the time to do this and practice this excuse me <laughs> 
uh, over time, you will really uh, develop some some um, confidence, and in, and it will help you see in your drawing. So what I want you to do is get your paper and your pencil, and I want you to put your eyes on that bowl of fruit reference picture right over there. Look at the reference picture. Don't look at your paper. Uh, and I think, let's see, uh, I'm going to put, which one of these do I want? I'll just put me like this. Okay. Oops, that gets rid of the reference photo. No good. I have one, though, somewhere. I thought it was that one. That hmm. would make for an actually very interesting blind content, Christine. <laughs> You, you don't you don't even get to see the bowl of fruit <laughs> okay uh, i have that in one of those but i can't find it right now so we're gonna have to do this one just don't look at my drawing don't look at your drawing put your pencil on your paper look at the bowl of fruit and now if this bothers you to do this i, I will narrate what i'm doing and you can listen to me and look at the bowl of fruit and draw along with me if you don't need to do that I prefer you don't. I prefer you just try this on your own uh, right now. But if, if you don't think you quite got what I'm telling you, then I'll tell you what I'm doing as I'm doing it. So ready, set, draw. I'm going to look at the bowl of fruit, and I'm going to start with drawing the bowl. And I'm going to start on the upper left side of the bowl, and I'm going to draw the bottom edge of the bowl. So draw down and around and up to. This is going to be hard because I can almost see my my drawing while I'm looking at the reference. Um, anyway, I went up to the upper right-hand side. Now I'm going to put that scalloped line back across to the other, uh, to the left top edge of the bowl. Okay, that's the bowl drawn. Now I'm going to put the line on there for the for the stripe, and then I'm going to go to where I think the bottom of the bowl is without looking, no looking. Go to where you think the bottom of the bowl is and draw that pedestal on there that the, you know, holds the thing up. And I think I might have just gone off my paper edge, but whatever. Uh, okay, so I think I've got the pedestal drawn on there and I'm gonna put that line for the stripe that's on there. Now I'm gonna go back up to where I think the top edge of my bowl is, and I'm gonna draw that banana. And I'm gonna try to put a second banana in there. Now I've gotta go back over to the left edge there and in my picture in my mind I think there should be an apple right there so I'm going to draw an apple instead of what I see there for fruit and just draw my apple symbol you know whatever you think an apple would look like beside that I'm going to put a lemon above those I'm going to put that pear shape in and the stem and the leaf that was on it and then I've got somewhere over to the right of that lemon, there's an orange in my mind. So I've put a circle there for an orange. Now I'm ready to finish it up with just putting some grapes in there somewhere. So I'm piling in some grapes. And I'm going to put some over on the side here and put one hanging down. And then I'm going to find where I think the, the table to the left of the bowl is. And I'm not looking. I'm just going to where I think it is. And I'm going to pile up some grapes over there. And now I can put my pencil down because I drew everything on there. Now I'm uh, look at my picture. It is so wonky looking. Let me just zoom in. Look at that. That one's even more wonky than this one turned out. Um, but uh, but there's some beauty in there that I see. You can think I'm weird if you want to, but I see beauty in that. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to uh, ask. Is there anyone bold enough that wants to show off their drawing? And if we have any takers, speak up so I can find you. And I will, uh, let's see, let me remove the spotlight on me. I will. This is Bev. Okay, yeah, look at that one. That's cool looking. Okay. I mine on brown, so I don't think you can see it. Oh, it is hard it's to see. Hard to see. Yeah, because yeah. it's on brown paper. I'm going to hold mine right. up, but I, I did it very lightly, so I don't think you can see it. Yes, we can see it. Okay. Very nice. <laughs> very nice. Okay. Was my, that was fun. Look at that one. <laughs> that one's cool looking. I like that. There you go. Okay, so um, 
Is, is everybody showed theirs that wanted to show theirs? Oh, Very nice, Bobby. I like it. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to put me back on the spotlight again here, and I'm going to show you what we're going to do now is we're going to take um, our paint brushes. Oops, I forgot to get my paper towels out. We're going to take our paints, and we're going to uh, paint this. And, you know, it's going to, it's not really going to be easy as, as what it would have been to paint that first one if we had painted it in, the, uh, the one that we drew that looked like this. This one's pretty obvious what paint goes where, uh, you know, because that's a red apple and that's a yellow banana. Well, now I'm going to have to find it in here and, and put color where I think it, it is. Uh, on yours, uh, do the same thing. Find where you think it was. And remember, that's sort of where we're headed. So if yours looks like this and it's recognizable, that is perfectly acceptable. In this one, my, my fruit's kind of floating. It's like levitating above the bowl in this one. In this one, it is totally mashed down into the bowl. So uh, it, it's none of our pieces are going to look exactly the same. But what I want you to do is just go ahead and get your paintbrush. And if you want a background color, go ahead and put some water all over the background here. I forgot to draw a line for my table, so I'll just make that with my paint. So I'm going to just put my background color. Um, I'm going to put a light green, like we've got a green wall back there. And I'm putting this green kind of behind my uh, fruit bowl. And let's say that the wall comes down to here. Otherwise, my grapes right there are going to be flying, which, you know, we've already determined that that's acceptable. Uh, but I'm just kind of painting in and around where I think this fruit probably, uh, in my my drawing work, probably came to. And I just put a little bit of a messy um, color. Let's see, is this like helping or hurting? Let's leave it off for a minute. I think that might be easier to see the color. Um, if you can't see color. I mean, because of the lighting. Now, I'm going to just put some water here for the table, and I'm going to make my tabletop brown, sort of, so I'm using burnt sienna to just put a little bit of color on there for a table. Okay, I just slammed that in there. And now I'm going to switch to a round brush because I believe it's going to be easier to paint the fruit with the round brush. I'm going to start off with, I need a stripe on my bowl. On our reference, it's red. Uh, on my painting, it's blue. I like blue best. It's my favorite color, so I'm going to put a blue stripe right across there. And I've got another blue stripe in the pedestal or foot or base of the bowl. So there's my stripe for the uh, bowl. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to get some bright yellow. And I'm going to put it on this or uh, yeah this orange, and I've got a reason for doing that. I'll tell you in a minute. And my lemon is right down here, so I'm going to paint that with my lemon yellow color. Now I'm going to get some. Oops, I should have put a little bit of that yellow right here on my peach as well. So I've got like an underpainting on the orange and the peach. Now to break it up a little. I'm going to use a different yellow color for my bananas. I have some quinacridone gold that I'm going to put on there. So I'm going to just paint this banana with this gold color. And then I'm going to take a little bit of uh, violet color or purpley color and put it in the top part there. And I've got a lot of water on there, so that really spread into there. And uh, you can see if I zoom in, it's kind of spreading out. It got in my orange, which I don't really want, but that's okay. I can fix that in a minute. Um, now I've got a red apple over in here somewhere. So I'm going to get some of my bright red, which is alizarin crimson. And I'm going to just paint that apple. I think that's a little too much color. Get some of that off there. Paint that apple on there. I 
again it touched into the wet paint beside it but we can we'll do what we need to do with that in a minute uh, I'm going to clean that color out of my brush and I'm going to clean a little bit of that purple out of my orange which currently is yellow and I'm going to clean the banana color out of my lemon so it's back to a lemon color now I'm going to take uh, while those things are drying I'm going to get some green some bright green that's uh, like a sap green color and paint the leaves that are coming off my peach which is currently still yellow but it is going to be a peach so I'm just going to put sap green color right there and you see I'm really hurrying and I'm not really trying to make this uh, realistic like with shading and stuff part of the the deal with this abstract thing is that uh, you just put bold color almost like straight out of the tube bold color and that is one of the uh, hallmarks of some of the uh, abstract artists some of the method that they used so there I've just got some uh, uh, leaf going there now I'm going to this orange is dry enough I'm going to get some scarlet lake which is like a red orange color but it is too red to uh, actually paint an orange so let's see if you can see my palette here I just got some of this red orange color and it's really too red to, to call that an orange but if I paint a little bit of it over top of my yellow color and then rinse the excess out and with the wet brush just kind of spread that out around over top of that yellow, the yellow shines through that red orange and makes my orange look more like an orange. And then I'm picking up a little bit of the color right there because that's going to be a gray. Okay, so now I've almost finished. Uh, I need to put the grapes in there and I need some sort of brown, dark brown. I'm going to take some burnt sienna and mix it into this little puddle of, of purple violet that I have there. And um, that's, that's probably dark enough. I'm going to make a stem on my apple. And in the drawing it came out over there, so just draw that like that. Okay, that's looking pretty good, and I might have a dot or two of dark color in my bananas, just because they usually do have some dark color. All right, now I'm going to get some yellow and mix it with some uh, of one of these puddles of blue that's on my palette. It honestly does not matter what color you mix it with. You can even mix it with some green. We just need a very pale, light green color. There's a lot of water in there. Um, see it's not really showing good on my palette because it is very light let me see if I move it over here does it show up better kind of it's just a light green color I'm going to paint these circles here and make them look more like grapes and that's my painting done now, <coughs> excuse me. One thing that I can do to enhance this is I can take a, a black pen, a fine point marker, and go and just add some detail to it, and and uh, make it make it have a little bit more sense or meaning. And, and if you want to, you can do that. I typically do, and especially at this point, we're not that many steps removed from the uh, realism or the, the representational. So uh, if you're still feeling that need to, to impose some kind of a sense or meaning into this, you can use your pen and do that. But remember, we're working toward abstract. So if you can leave it just like that, or maybe only add some pen markings where they kind of help it along, but still maintain its abstractness. Uh, let's see if I can pull out my pens here and show you what I'm talking about. So I'm gonna take this one here, and um, I might want to enhance this bowl a little bit. But I'm not gonna change where I drew my lines because they're, um, they're given this wonky shape to this, but they also really 
uh, look kind of cool when you're looking at it and thinking at it, thinking of it from the standpoint of we're making an abstract. So um, I'm going to do a couple of my grapes over here, and I'm going to outline this apple. And the apple is outside of the bowl, so you know it'd be hard to be more abstract than that. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and do this leaf. I'll do that stem and this leaf. That gives it a little bit of a shape. I drew a leaf shape on there even though my paint's not exactly um, inside of where I outlined. It's okay because that is part of enhancing the abstractness. Now I'm going to also outline a little bit on this banana. And it looks more banana-ish like that, but also I haven't outlined, I haven't been very careful to outline only where I painted. And I'm going to actually draw in some grapes that I didn't even paint here. And I'm going to put a little bit of a thing that you might see at the top of the grapes right on there with the pen. Um, that's pretty good. I might go ahead and outline some of these over here just because. But you don't have to outline all of them. And you don't have to outline them exactly correct. And while this is still looking enough like a bowl of fruit, it, it looks like, you know, maybe you had started your wine way too early in your paint process. But <laughs> but it looks it still looks abstract. It's fun. And because we put this pretty color on here, it it looks like a picture a fun and abstract one but it looks like a picture it doesn't look like someone just drew a big mess and mashed their fruit bowl, fruit bowl down that is uh, one way to do this and this is one way so those are your two samples of that type of uh, abstract starting with see I just realized why I can't get them both in the frame there uh, starting with a blind contour drawing so that is uh, step two in moving away from realism and representational towards uh, the, the uh, non-representational, moving along our abstract line, you know, away from realism towards abstract. That's what we're doing here. And all of this does fall under the heading legitimately of abstract painting. And if you uh, do any research and if you uh, call up that article that I gave you the link to and read that, you will uh, learn a whole lot and you'll see that this is really, uh, really a thing. Okay, now, now we're going to do this one, this style. Now I want you to have a look at this. This is my fruit in a bowl. Can you see my bowl with the blue stripes on it? And there's an apple and a lemon and a, a peach. I forgot to show you the peach in the other one that I just well, um, let me go back for a second and show you what you got to do to this one. Um, because we painted it yellow and it got a little green in it, you take a little bit of magenta, switch over here. I'm taking just a little bit of magenta and it's very watery. And like we painted over the yellow there, we're going to paint over the yellow here and put a blush color on that peach, but we're going to not go all the way to the edge. And that gives it a little bit of there, that's that's our peach. It would look more like a peach if if I had been paying, if I'd been looking at what I was doing, I would have put the stem over here coming out of the peach instead of out of the grapes. But but again, we're doing abstract, so none of that needs to concern us at all, not in the least. So that was you know what you, what I meant to tell you of how to get the color right on your peach and on your orange. Anyhow. So, oops, we were zoomed in on purpose. So we've got a banana in this bowl. Can you see it? You can see the banana, right? <laughs> Does it look like a banana? Did I draw a banana? No, I put a dash of color that represents a banana. I put a dash of color that represents the apple. I've got some dashes of color for the leaves uh, and, and, uh, and some little squares for the grapes. 
So this is much more abstracted than the other thing, but I have a plan in my mind. So, you know, uh, doing an abstract isn't just you put your paper down and you start sloshing paint on with no plan whatsoever. That's not really what abstract is. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to tell you, get your next piece of paper out and get your paintbrush out again. And I think I will use my uh, flat angled brush for this. And I'm going to, uh, looking at my reference uh, photo fruit bowl right there, I'm going to start this painting out by putting the uh, stripe on the bowl. Again, I'm using blue instead of red. And the uh, this is meant to be as abstract as you can get it doing this kind of thing, just dashes of color. It, honestly doesn't matter if you put this dash of color across your page like this. You can put it across your page like this. You can put it up and down. It's a dash of color that represents the line on the bowl. So I'm going to put it like that. Now I'm going to also take my time and get it like I really like it. Okay, that's a good line for that bowl. Then I need the line that goes around the uh, pedestal in the bottom. And that's a good one for that. So I've got my a dash of color and it's blue straight out of the tube so to speak so it's very bright uh, clean blue color and, and I put the, the lines on there okay now I think I want to go ahead and put my banana in this bowl next so rinsing all the blue out of my brush uh, I'm going to get some of my banana color which in this case is quinacridone uh, gold and also we're not not looking anymore. You can look at your paper and plan where you want to put this dash of color for this banana. Um, and so I'm going to loosen that up a little bit so it's a little bit more gold color. And let's see, I want this banana. Um, I'm just going to dash that banana right there. I think I'm going to have two bananas in this picture. So there's two bananas in my fruit bowl. And next I think I will put in, let's see, let me put in the apple. I'm not going to paint an apple though. I'm going to put in a dash of my alizarin uh, crimson red color that is the color of my apple. And where I want this apple to be is right about there. That's my apple. Now I need a lemon in there too. So get the red completely out of my brush and go in my lemon color. And I think the lemon it goes right there. That's a good lemon. Now, while I've got that color on my brush, I need an orange in this bowl also. So I'm going to say, um, I'm going to put an orange right there. And I'm going to paint red over that to turn it into my orange color. So that is my orange. And now if I'm doing that peach in this thing, my bowl's getting a little crowded. So I'm going to put the peach over here. And it, again, it's kind of a circle because the peach is a circle, but an apple is a circle too, and I painted that one a square just because I wanted to, because I'm doing the abstract. So now, um, let's see, lemon, orange, peach, yep, I can rinse the yellow out of my brush. And what's left are, um, I might need some leaves on my peach. So I'm going to get some sap green. And I think uh, I'm going to put some yellow in there because I would like it to be a pretty good color. And it is. So it's all right. I like that color good enough. No, I don't. I'm going to add some turquoise to it. Oh, that made it really dark. I don't know if I like it, but I'm going to try it and see. All right. So I need a leaf. 
um, there's not room for the leaves where the leaves are supposed to go, but that's okay because this is an abstract, so I'm going to put a leaf right there. That's one of the leaves on the uh, peach, which is down here. Now the other leaf is going to have to go over here because I don't have room for it where it belongs. So there's my leaf. Those are two leaves for the peach. Now um, I need some grapes. I think I'll wait last on the grapes and I'm going to go ahead and get the Scarlet Lake and turn my orange into an orange colored circle here. Just by putting that red orange color over top of the yellow. Okay, there's my orange. It actually looks like an orange, uh, but it is flying around in the air. Okay, I'm going to touch a little bit of color here just for like the navel of the orange. Because I can. Um, you know, it's my abstract. If I want my orange to have a navel, navel it can't. Um, let's get some magenta and put a blush on the peach. That's a good peach blush. Because it doesn't have to, it, we're not going for realism. It doesn't have to be realism. Now I need some grapes and I like what I did in my one up here. I used my color and just kind of put some grapes in that are strokes of the brush. They're, uh, they're not even making an attempt to be round. But they don't need to. It might need to be a little darker. So. Yeah, that's a good color. And I want some grapes right up in here. And a couple of grapes down here. Okay. There's my uh, paint work done. But I'm going to put the line work in it. Remember I showed you in that article uh, the page about line art? Here's where we can get, have really a lot of fun with our lines. We can do something like this with it. Now I want to zoom in and show you how on here, uh, I haven't really outlined those grapes. I didn't actually draw any lines in to turn that bowl into a bowl. Uh, I, I just put some lines with my black fine point and maybe not so fine point, like maybe this is ultra fine and this is just fine, I don't know. Um, I just put some marks on there with my black pen. You don't have to use black. You can use any color marker you want to. You can uh, you can draw circles. I, I sort of drew circles around my grapes, but you see I kept my line continuous. It's a continuous line going around the page here in some places. And, uh, and I strayed a little bit from the grapes and went over here and put a curly cue because I thought that was a fun idea to do. And this is an abstract. We're trying to make fun and we're trying to make a line art. And I didn't outline my leaves, but I did put some lines by them and I connected them because they would be on one stem. Um, now they could look like a whole bunch of other things than just leaves. They kind of almost look like eyes in glasses or weird uh, eyebrows or I don't know what. But, um, but they do. And then for fun, I put a little thing over here that kind of represents a bug because maybe there would be a fruit fly flying around this bowl of fruit. And you can have stuff that you, you could draw an ant that looks like an ant in your abstract because it might either me either you're doing surrealism or you're just uh, doing this line art thing where let me see if I can find that paper again and show you on that page. Um, especially this one down in the bottom here. These are just continuous line drawings. Now there's nothing, uh, there's there's a little bit of a realistic appearance. I mean they, they do represent, you can tell it's meant to be a chicken or a rooster and a ram and a cow and a duck. You can see that, but they're not really drawn 
to be realism. And um, the same with these other things. These, this bunch of lines is just a bunch of lines. This, though, there's some stuff going on there, but it isn't, this is not really a portrait. This is a face. These are faces, and they're at different angles, but this is not meant to be a portrait of a person. It's line art with color added. This is just lines with just lines, no color. Um, but anyway, it, it, that gets you the, the idea um, of what we're doing here. We're just going to add some lines. So this is probably dry enough to draw on it now. But what I'm going to suggest to you is that sometimes our, our uh, work needs to kind of gel. It needs to set up and, and you need to give it time to talk to you and tell you where it wants to have some lines. Um, like I can look at this right here and see that I like how that came out and I got a vague idea of how I can put some lines around that, but that idea isn't totally in my head yet. So I'm not going to draw on it yet. I'm going to let this gel a bit. And that is what I did with this one. So that's why I have a finished one here to show you. This is what ideas came to me as I took some time more time than we actually have right now. Um, but I took some time and uh, thought about this, and I thought a uh, little triangle right there would be good. Another one right beside it would be good. Until I ended up, I had this weird line of going, and then I thought, well, okay, mm, let's see what happens if I connect all those triangles and draw a line up around it here. And then I stopped working on that, and I went and put this curly cue thing on, and I liked it, so I put one over here. And I liked that. And then um, I started looking at it and I thought, well, I don't want to do exactly the same thing over here. What can I do different? And I drew this square on there. But then I thought it was boring with just a square on there. And I thought, uh, what else can I do? I got a, a thicker pen, a bigger marker, and drew a thicker line square on the inside. And I thought, yeah, that's getting there. I like how that looks. Um, it's still a, it's still needs something. I don't know what it needs. Let me go work on something else for a minute. I think we'll get some dots right here. I, you know, that's how this comes about. Just looking at it and thinking, uh, what does it need? Uh, I don't know. And you can't really rush this. So you just take your time and you think of what you want to put in different places. And if you need to set it aside and go back to work on something else, I almost always have more than one thing going at a time, which allows me work on this one a little and then work on this one a little. And that's kind of why I've got us with all of these pieces going all at one time here. Uh, I could be working on this, this, and, and this all at the same time, looking and comparing notes and saying, uh, what do I need here? What do I need there? Uh, what, what will be, what will make this piece take it to the next step? What's, what's the right thing? So that's, uh, that's part of the process there. So um, I'm going to go ahead and set, let's see, this one goes back over here. I'm going to set this one aside for the moment. Unless, are we at a point anyone wants, to, we have one more painting to make, and it's going to be messy. So uh, now's a good time. Does anyone want to show any of the pieces you've done so far? And, and you have to unmute and speak up, and that way yours will pop onto the screen. So I see uh, Bobby that showing is mine. mine. That's looking pretty. I like it. Okay. Uh, someone else? And this is Beth. I didn't use watercolor paper, but... I did your exercise. It was fun. You've got the right idea happening. And, and you know, if you do that on watercolor paper and, and your paper doesn't buckle quite as much, but you, but you know what? That doesn't look bad, even though your paper buckled a little. Yeah, it was a fool around. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's a good exercise. Yeah. Okay, anyone else? This is Mercedes. Um, okay. Beautiful. Beautiful. So, um, oh. I saw yours, Mercedes. <laughs> And this is one. I didn't know if you could see it. Here's two. Two. I have one. Okay, I see Lynn's. 
Sarah, turn your camera on. What? Turn, turn your camera on, Sarah. I think Sarah is logged in twice, and we're getting a bit of an echo. One yeah. has the camera on, and the other one does not. Because well, I have to go on my cell because my computer oh, doesn't have the thing. Can you see it? I don't know. I see it. Very nice. It's the light's not great, but yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah we see okay. that. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks for showing it. Okay, Thank anyone you. else before we move to the next? Okay, Jackie, you have to talk. Well, I, yes, that's fine. That was fun. I like doing that. Okay, very nice. Okay, I'm going to uh, take back over again here. And we're going to move to the last one, which is the one that's super abstract. This is, this is the kind of thing that most of us think of when we think of abstract. We think of something really messy like this. And um, a lot of times you'll hear people say, I've heard people say, I've been in um, you know, company with someone where I've seen what I consider to be a really bad abstract. And, and almost wanted to agree with it when someone says, oh man, my my toddler could paint that, my cat could paint that, or my cat can paint better than that. I mean, not all people appreciate abstract art. If you don't uh, appreciate it, you don't see anything in it. And, um, you know, if I didn't have a daughter who's got a fine art degree and, and we've had long conversations I, I, I wouldn't really have ever realized that there is actually some meaning and some planning and something behind most of those abstracts, especially the, the, uh, the famous ones. And I can now um, name a few abstract artists that I do appreciate their work and find it interesting and pretty, but it's not ever going to be the thing that I'm mostly interested in painting. And to do painting like this, um, this was a fun exercise and I had fun doing it and I think this is this is nice but it's not my thing you know it's not what I love to do but I can tell you that this wasn't just a bunch of paint splatter on this paper so we're gonna do this um, on it I hope you've got another piece of paper hopefully you've got this one taped down to something because this is going to get messy so what we're going to do here is very similar to what we've already done. I am, however, going to start off with spraying some water on my paper. Now I have two spray bottles here. This one gives a really fine, even mist, and this one makes really splatty uh, water spraying out. And I'm going to use this one because I want something kind of, you know, not even. So I just sprayed some water on my paper. If I tilt it, I uh, don't know if the light will catch it. There, you can see, it's just kind of splats of water. Um, so I'm gonna then take my, uh, my, round, my big round brush and I'm gonna do just what I did on the other uh, thing we just finished. I'm gonna say, okay, uh, my fruit bowl, back to the main picture here. My fruit bowl has a stripe of color on it, <coughs> and it's blue. So I'm going to get some blue on my brush. But rather than painting a stripe, I'm going to just splatter some blue on there. I mostly like that, but let me just do some dashes of color like that. Okay, that's the stripes on my bowl. Pretty, huh? Okay, now um, I need... Um, Again, I do want a banana in this bowl. So I'm going to get some of this quinacridone color and I'm going to put a banana right there. And I'm kind of loose and free with that. Just uh, there, that's a banana. Now, in case my banana has spots, let me put some spots like that. And uh -huh. sorry to, I'm sorry to interrupt. I had someone at the door. What is the blue exactly? What is that blue? Yeah, what, it, what does that represent? That's the stripe on the bowl. That's oh. The blue stripe on the bowl. 
I'm so sorry. It's so abstract. I couldn't. <laughs> That's well. We're we're taking it to the next level here. We're okay, I'm here. I'm did sorry. you did you see this picture? I did this is see what it we're before. doing. Well, okay, I'm trying. <laughs> okay, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> so now I have some uh, purple spots on my banana because it might be getting rotten. So there's my purple spots on my banana, my dark spots. Okay, now um, we need. Let's see here. I think I'll put the red apple in next. So I'm going to get a lot of really juicy red color on my brush. And I'm just going to splat some color on there. Okay, that's my apple. I think I like it just like that. Done. Apple is done. Um, now I need a lemon. So lemon yellow. A lot of juicy paint because if you're splattering, you can't splatter if the, your paint's not good and wet. So I've got some yellow here and I'm going to, um, you know, let's see what I want to do with this. Um, I'm going to put, I'm just going to put this yellow right here. That's my lemon right there. I just decided it's sticking up a little bit more. There, that's my lemon. Okay, now um, I have to put an orange in, and the orange isn't going to work quite as well this way as it did on the other one. So I'm going to just see if I can get some yellow coming off the brush right there. And into that yellow, I'm going to put some of my um, Scarlet Lake. Don't have quite enough paint. There we go. Okay, Scarlet Lake right there. And I'm going to hit it with my Mr. Bottle. There, look at that. that. That did something cool. It looks more orange on my paper. Let's see if I zoom in. Can you see it? A little bit. Uh, also, I got this straw, and I'm going to blow that paint around a little bit. Okay, there's my orange. Okay, now i um, got a lemon, i got an orange, i got an uh, apple. I need a peach. That's the wrong brush. I need a peach, and it also starts off with yellow. So I'm going to just put some yellow on there, and then I'm going to put some magenta into that. That looked like a good thing to do, to get uh, a peach on there. And I think all that's left, um, oh, I need a couple of leaves. So I'll get some of my leaf color here. Scoop that all up and see if I can make some of that fall onto the page. Okay, leaves are on there. Now I need some uh, some grapes, so I'm going to use this color and I'm going to lighten it up a little bit more with a little bit more yellow, just to distinguish it from the other colors. I distinguished too much though, so a little bit more blue back in there. All right, got that really watery, and I'm going to uh, put some grapes in in a couple of places. We need grapes all in there. And I think I want some grapes right there. And um, mm, let's put a grape right there. And a big bunch of them right there. And I'm going to hit that with the spray bottle. I'm up high. Because I don't want them to go very far in there. Running. Okay. Now I'm going to hit that because I didn't like how it was blobby. Uh, and oh. get my straw out again.
Okay, I think I like it. Uh, this has too much, um, I think that, that doesn't have any definition in it. So uh, I'm going to just dot in, mm, what do I want here? I'm going to put some of the dark color that was my, um, spots on my banana. Now it's really, really, really wet, so it's really going all over the place. But it has more interest now. Okay, I'm going to leave that alone for a little bit just to see if I end up liking it. It looks like a big mess. But, you know, most abstract looks like a big mess to me, especially when we get it this abstract. When that dries, it will have morphed and done some things for some, some mixing and, and some stuff. And if I have parts that I don't really like, I can still go back in and paint over it. I can lift color. I can get something with texture. Like maybe if I had a little piece of of netting that you sometimes buy produce in at the grocery store, it comes in a little net bag. You could get a piece of that net bag and and dip it in your paint and let spread it on your picture and kind of imprint that net pattern on there. That might be an interesting addition to this. Um, but you know, it's it's again we're at the stage of where it sort of needs to gel and let you. Um, you know, your painting will talk to you and tell you what else you want to put on it. And, and we're kind of exploring and experimenting. And there's a lot of um, a lot of ways you can incorporate just the joy of having a bowl of fruit with the way you dash your color on there, with the color choices that you make, with how you let them blend, um, all that kind of stuff, and all that plays into when you're creating an abstract. So um, that is my take on how to do an abstract bowl of fruit, um, four different ways. And I think I'll move this one out of the way and put my finished and dry ones back all in the frame so we can see the progression. Christine, I don't yes. know about everybody else on here, but this was fun. I thought this was really fun and different and everything goes and they all look so nice. So what is, what's people's verdict? Did you like doing this one? Um, anybody want to comment? You can turn on your... I liked it. I thought it was fun and interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. A lot of fun. Okay. Yeah. A lot of fun. Good. So we've got... We've got I some, enjoyed it very much. some budding abstract artists here. No. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, I'm more abstract than I would like to be. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, you know, it, there, there truly is a, a lot that you can learn from taking a little time to do some abstract work uh, and and loosen up. Let's see what have I got going on here. Oh, there, hopefully you, I've got these where you can see all of them. Uh, oh, I think I have a different. Is that yeah? That works. Writing is over top of it, but you can see it all all there. Mm -hmm. um, I'll just switch over there really quick. If I can find my mouse. Where did my mouse go? Here? I like the semi abstract the best. Um. I think that if I'm ever going to do much abstract, I would paint semi-abstract. Mm -hmm. This one, this one is unique and interesting, and it was a fun experiment. But this is yeah. not my thing. Uh, yeah. I love how this one came out. Yeah. This one, I thought this just just looks cool, and it was fun to do. This yeah. one was kind of fun too. This one, I uh, I'm most comfortable with. But getting out of our comfort zone is sometimes a good thing to do. And mm -hmm. doing one like this and then switching to do this and take it to this and push yourself to get to this, you will learn some things. You know, um, 
I, I love to teach people to draw, and, and people are telling me, well, I don't want to draw, I don't want to draw a lesson. Why do we draw if what we want to do is paint? It's because that drawing informs our painting. It gives us information we need to know to improve our painting. Well, so does this exercise. This mm -hmm. blind contour drawing, I get so much out of that. And I have, I have four or five large, big, thick sketchbooks full where I've done blind contour drawings for 30 years. I love it. I've got some that um, I look at them and I, I remember right where I was when I drew that vase of chrysanthemums. It p brings me back to the moment and my <coughs> husband looks at it and he thinks, you know, you can't show that to people. They're going to think you don't know how to draw. Well, <laughs> <laughs> the, the fact of the matter is um, this will this will get you some information and it may even help push you over the top into that point where you can put emotion into your painting even though your painting may be more representational rather than non-representational but remember to think of it as um, as there's a line you know and over here is over here is realism and representational and over here uh, where is it there oh, on this side I need a bigger picture so I, my line can be longer <laughs> but anyway going from this side to this side is a line and you call that line abstraction and if you're going from uh, let's see what did I say this side is realism and representational and this is non-representational how far along that line you are are you closer to to represent to, yeah are you closer to non-representational or are you closer to representational it's still abstracted it's just degrees of abstraction so you can go anywhere from this to this and be doing an abstracted <coughs> type of work uh, and and if you really take the time to study it you find out they got names for all these movements fauvism cubism surrealism um expressionism impressionism pointillism all of those things are movements that came about as people worked their way from uh, along that line from realism into the uh, more abstract and uh, and you 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 learn to improve your technique for putting paint on your paper you learn what your paints will do when they mix together like this you learn how that your line does not need to be exactly perfect to be beautiful and and uh, for there to be beauty in your painting. Uh, you learn you don't even really necessarily have to fully divide, uh, define each thing that you're doing. Uh, just a dab of color to represent it. Maybe just enough to put the idea in, in your viewer's mind that, okay, there's an apple over there. And they may never even realize or look at it closely enough to see that you didn't actually draw and paint an apple you just put a dab of color there but it still reads as apple in the mind and, and looks pretty so there's a lot of good you can learn from from doing this type of um, I hate to call it exercise because that sounds like you know we're, we're we're practicing you're not actually practicing we created real art so there you have my take on abstract uh, I hope you enjoyed it. I uh, hope you learned a little bit of something. I know I did when I did my study for uh, teaching this class because, like I said, I am not an abstract artist. But it was a lot of fun uh, studying and um, just reminding myself all of the great reasons that um, painting uh, abstract every once in a while or working and pushing towards non-representational or just less representational if that's um, as much as you can do but anyway uh, that will help you in all of your painting a little bit of study and a little bit of playtime with uh, the less representational will that is so again I hope you enjoyed it if you did please give me a like on my video here and uh, if you're not already a subscriber if you subscribe to the and you'll get notifications when I put out new videos and also uh, I would love it if you'd leave me a comment 
below uh, letting me know if you have any questions or any requests or anything like that. Um, that helps me a lot. So thanks for that. And uh, until next time, happy painting!